Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and in this one we're going to talk about a couple different things but it's all going to relate around fire and painting fire things with inner flame and heat mm -hmm. things like that so I'm going to show you a couple different techniques for painting what I'll call inner flame so if you go back and look at that image from uh, the Age of Sigmar book that I put at the beginning of this um, you'll see that there's actually two different types of flaming creatures there in that fight. Obviously, you have Grimnir, and then you have the big Volcantrix or whatever. Um, but they're very, they're actually different if you look at them closely. So Grimnir in that picture, the dwarf, he has like an inner flame, like an inner heat that's coming out of the center of his chest that's like white hot. But his head is also on fire. And so when you look at your light sources, if you look at him, he's actually highlighted... Other than the light in the center of his chest, he's actually highlighted fairly traditionally. That is to say, the you know the tops of his head or his muscles are lighter than the bottom. Okay. But if you look at Volcantrix or Volcatrix or whatever the heck that big worm's name was that he died to and killed simultaneously, um, that one is highlighted completely differently. It's highlighted like traditional flame. So before we get into the actually watching me do it and the techniques, we need to take a minute and talk about flame. So I got this guy, which is a rather flaming miniature I painted once. And most people, when you think about normal fire, I think most people at this point understand that fire goes from white or very near white at its hottest point up to red, brown, uh, black, when it's completely carbonized smoke basically at the top, right? So if we look at this guy's wings, you can see the color transition we're going for here from white all the way out to this red-brown. Okay, Now, we can argue about how successful I was here at capturing this. Personally, I think I have too much white on here. It doesn't actually look this white in reality. like It's kind of being washed out, but it doesn't really matter. Um, this whole thing is going to be challenging to shoot because whites, yellows, and reds all show up like crap on camera. But we're going to press on. Um, the important part is the color theory, that the innermost point, when we do just straight fire like this, it's not hard, really. You just make it white, and then you kind of go up to, to red, yellow, orange, red, or brown, or something like that. <clears throat> when you're doing things like wings, or even worse, you know, a torso, okay, or a chest piece, we're going to use these two ogres to do the two techniques I'm going to talk about. This, these center ridge lines in his muscles would be the hottest points, right? If you think about like the way that worm is at the beginning, the innermost spots in that worm, right? So like here in these these muscle folds, which we normally darken, are actually the brightest. If you go look at that worm, because that's the open crack to his inner heat, right? The outer part of him, what we would normally highlight the lightest out here in the middle, right, of this part of say the, the back or something, is the darkest and so all the normal tools you have at your disposal say like your washes and stuff right are going to fail you because those are meant to darken things shades are by their nature meant to take whatever you're working on and make it darker not lighter <coughs> it's just the nature of the thing it collects and pools okay so what we're going to talk about is a couple different tactics for going about this. We're going to do one of these guys, like these just happened to be two minis I had available. I wanted to pick something big and that had a lot of flesh so you could see what was going on. I have no particular plans for these two to be fire ogres, but hey, whatever. Um, so we're going to take it. We're going to take a couple different tactics. The first is going to be if you want to do it more like the dwarf, where he's still traditionally highlighted, okay, um, and but but flamey, so basically fiery skin, right, uh, where he's hot. Um, so we're going to do that. And the other one we're going to do is we're going to do what happens if you want to do something that has straight inner flame, okay, um, where you want to portray that the outer surface of the thing here is the coldest and the innermost is the hottest, okay? So if you want to paint your fire slayers, for example, to be as though they're made, they're full of just liquid magma that's, you know, sort of spilling out, okay? So those are the tactics we're going to take. 
Uh, we're going to do each of them all the way through. Uh, and all of these techniques are going to be the same thing for painting fire. I'm not going to actually go through fire itself. Um, you can see here, I mean, it's pretty standard. You start at white, you go up to red. There's lots of good videos for painting fire on the internet. Um, and so I, I'm not going to cover that very much. Instead, we're going to talk about doing inner flame and a flaming sort of skin. All right? So when we pick back up, we're going to be over at the airbrush booth, and we'll go from there. All right, so we're over in the airbrush booth, and you can see I've primed this guy white, okay? And that was a very important intentional choice. He is white because we need to keep the recesses, and, by, and I really made sure we got a nice, solid airbrush primer layer of white on there, okay? And we're going to need to keep these recesses, uh, this light color. Effectively, what we're going to do here, if I was going to put it really, really simple, and we're going to focus on the skin, is what we're going to do is we're going to do the opposite of zenithal highlighting, okay? Instead of trying to make it lighter as we go up, we're going to make it darker, sort of. It's just we're not going to necessarily focus specifically from top down. We're going to be a little more choosy about how we do it. The other thing you need to keep in mind is you need to think about what underpins red, and the answer to that is brown, okay? Brown is sort of the basis of your red tone in paint. And so specifically, the two things I'm going to use here in my sort of reverse pseudo zenithal are a rust and a dark brown. Uh, both these are model air colors. I'm sure there's plenty of others. But as you can see there, we'll try to get a good color. There you go. A very sort of ruddy mid-tone brown and a very dark black brown. Okay? All right. So those are the colors. All right, so as usual, I'm going to put a little thinner in the airbrush first before any paint goes in, just a drop or so. I'm going to take my rust, give it a good shake, as always. And I'm just going to put in like two drops of rust. We really don't need much at all. Come out of there. There we go. Okay, so we've got our rust in there. You could use any mid-tone brown, by the way. So there you go. You can see that's about how much I've got in there. Not a lot. Because we don't need a lot. Okay. Make sure we've got some good flow. There we go. So now what I'm going to do is, from above here, okay, I'm going to spray him. I'm going to be light on the trigger. And I want to try to focus... I'm always going to go from the above angle, and I want to try to focus on the areas of the muscle that are farthest from those deep ridges. Okay. So, for example, when it comes to the hands, I'm going to blow at this high angle here over his hands, so that that way I cover all of them, but leave the inner parts of the fingers still white. Right, so we can see that. Right. And by the way, you can do it from both directions because you're not really zenithal highlighting. You just want to make sure you don't get it inside in between the ridges because we want those to stay white. Make sure we get the face. Again, we're just reversing here. And we're going to be very careful with a nice... We want to focus on the areas that are farthest away. But we want to be fairly generous with this. We don't want a lot to stay white. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm a bit under the weather, but wanted to get this out, so I apologize. Getting underneath his, uh, his big weapon here is bit of a problem. I apologize. As I said, I never intended these guys to be this. I just sort of picked the best ones that I thought would show it off. Okay, so what have we got? We've done most of it. We've left our deepest recesses still hopefully fairly bright. You can see that there, right? You can see his face is still white, okay? And then we're just going to make sure we get all those little skin parts in case we missed anything. Just give it a good look over. 
you know, this guy, he's wearing lots of clothes. If we were actually dealing with a fire slayer here, uh, he would be a lot less clothed. Clothed. Sorry. They are very, they are very naked individuals. Okay. Sorry, I probably should do it on camera there. One thing you got to be careful of is when you're just spraying very minimal amounts of paint like this and you're doing it in bursts, is you got to watch out for your tip dry. So if that happens, make sure you clean off your tip or blow out the extra before you shoot it at your miniature. You don't want you don't want a bunch of paint just splatting out all over the miniature. All right. So there we go. So we got him like that. We're good. All right. So we're going to blow out the rest of the paint. Do a quick cleaner run through here. Now, I'm going to a darker brown, so I'm not going to really like focus on hyper cleaning my airbrush because I don't care that much for this individual little paint change here. Because again, it's the same, you know, it's just a darker shade of the same color. If I was switching between white and purple or something like that, I would be much more concerned. Okay. So, got our airbrush nice and clean, free of uh, brown paint. And now we're going to do the same thing, only we're going to get the dark brown in. Okay. So now we're moving to the dark brown. Or this is like a, a camo black brown, I think, in one of the other colors. Like, there's a lot of different versions of this out there, and that's fine. Anything that's a very, very dark black brown is what you're looking for here. You don't have to use the exact same paints I do. There's no magic to the exact paint I use. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to focus in even tighter on just the spaces that are the farthest away from the ridges. We're going to get them nice and dark. Okay, so we blow down his hand, on his shoulder here. And by the way, you don't have to be perfect with this. It's okay. What we're doing here is giving ourselves a nice, a nice map to work with. It's not going to be perfect at this stage, and that's all right. There's nothing wrong with that. Flip him around so we can get the other side of his hands, because again, we don't want to get inside the fingers, right? If you can see inside there, sorry, I'll get to a zoom, there we go. You can see they're still nice and white in the middle. It's very dark outside, okay? We want to really focus that up and make sure that, like, we have these lines that are just very solid of that color along the muscle ridge, okay? So we've got like an inverse highlight here. Making sure we get those little under parts. Less important because you can't really see them on this model, so it doesn't matter too much. Okay, so now what do we got? We got a burnt little hot dog. Right? That's kind of what it looks like. We got our burnt little hot dog. And that's what we want. Okay? So, now comes the next step, all right? So what are we gonna do with our burnt little hot dog? Well, now we're gonna turn him on fire. Oh, I guess if you wanted, by the way, if you had wanted his pants to be brown, which is a good idea with flame, you could, you know, just very quickly hit this guy's pants up, turn them nice and dark, right? I'll do that now since I'm sitting here and I've got the paint. The point being, don't ever waste paint if you uh, if you know you're going to be doing something like if we're going to want his pants to be a nice ruddy brown tone that mixes in. Well then, hey, let's just take care of that right now. This guy's got nice big oversized pantaloons that we can uh, that we can highlight here, or paint, I suppose. Not really highlighting them yet. We're just putting down some color. Okay, 
So there you go. Now he's got little brown pants. Yay, brown pants. Okay, now we get rid of the rest of our paint. Now we're going to make sure we clean our airbrush nice and thoroughly. Okay, so we're going to run a couple runs through with a cleaner. Because now is where we're going to come to our secret tech. Okay, what we've done here is we've created this fig where the highlights, as it were, or the points farthest away from the center are very, very, very dark, right? They're this dark chocolate brown. Whereas the points down in the ridges are very, very white. They're the still showing the original primer color, which is what we want. Because again, we're going for our inner flame here, okay? So it's very important if we want to do this as quickly as possible and not have to try to reverse layer this or build this up from nonsense with a brush or something like that. Remember, this is about cheating, okay? It's very important that we keep those white. All right, so our secret weapon here is going to be this guy, which is not around anymore, I don't think. I think they struck this from the line. If you can find this at your store, get it. It's incredibly useful in a lot of ways. If you don't have this, use the shade instead. Uh, it'll still work. Um, but this is Lamenter's Yellow, and this is the Glaze. And what I love about this is this is so thin, okay? And that's probably why I'm guessing it didn't sell very well, because most people don't know how to use it or what to use it on. I find it to be continuously one of the most useful glazes in this line because it will give you an extremely true yellow. Okay, so what am I going to do? I'm going to shake it up. I have my little medicine dropper. I take some out, and I'm going to just drop some yellow straight in my airbrush. I don't really care how much. It's not really super relevant. Uh, some. I clean out my medicine dropper, of course. Don't leave that with, you know, with paint in it of any kind, ever. We're going to seal that up. Okay, now what have I got? I've got an airbrush full of that yellow stuff. So, now the interesting thing about these glazes, because they're so thin, <coughs> is that they don't show over darker colors. They just tint. So what I'm going to do, is you can see, I'm just going to spray this pretty liberally around. And this time I'm not shooting at an angle. Right? I'm going to get a nice coat of this all over him, including the darker parts. Because look what happens when I shoot it over that darker part. Nothing. Nothing happens. Because this is so thin and so lightly colored, it just can't touch that dark brown. But as soon as it hits the white, it immediately tints it yellow. Right? And that's exactly what we want to happen. Because right now we want to get the hottest part of our flame. So we're just coating that all over. Not really being too careful about it as you can see, because you don't have to be. Who cares? You're not going to hurt your darker work. That's the advantage. That's why we use that nice dark color. Now, Lamenter's Yellow is truly a great product, and it's really a shame they cut it from the line. Uh, fortunately, I stocked up on a few, so I should be good for several years to come, even at the rate I use it. Because you just don't need a lot of it to do anything. Okay, so what have we got now? Now... We've got that, right? So now we've got this yellow in the cracks, and we've got this darker color outside. All right? <coughs> so now we're going to get rid of the rest of our yellow. And boy, did I put too much in there, which is fine. Goodness sakes. What a waste of a fine product. Oops. A little much there. 
This is one of the best parts about this method is it's actually kind of hard to screw up. I mean, if you really misplace your brown or something, this can always be corrected later. I should just be dumping this back in the pot. I've got so much of it in there. Be careful with your medicine dropper. I think that's the take home point there. Don't go crazy. There we go. All right, we got all our yellow out. So we're just going to do it again. We're just going to quickly shoot through some cleaner and we're good to go. All right, now it's time for our next step. Okay, and our next step is going to be using another glaze. And this time we are going to use our old friend, Blood Letter. Now this one's still around and quite popular. I know this one got used a lot. And it's a great, great glaze. In fact, I like all these in this line. Let me just say that. They're all very useful. Um, but Blood Letter, of course, is our red one. Unsurprisingly. And we're going to get a little of that. We'll be a little more careful this time so I don't go too overboard. We'll just put a few drops of that down in the airbrush. Again, I don't have to thin these or anything. I mean, they're basically water. You know, they're so thin. Again, that's what makes them challenging to paint with normally, but so useful for us here. Okay, so again, there you go. Just put some of that red down in there. Now what I'm going to do, make sure we got some good flow here. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is the same way I traced before. I'm just going to trace here along those lines. And I'm looking to hit the edges of the yellow. Not all of it. I don't want to completely cover my yellow. But where it meets the brown, it's going to turn red. Just a deep, deep red. Where it meets the yellow, it's going to turn orange. And you'll notice, as we build up our coats, it really turns more red. So we're just kind of going around, we're following the dark lines that we created with the brown and turning that red. We're being very careful, and again, you notice I'm doing this obviously as the first step, so when I overspray onto like his arm or his armor or something, who cares? So let's take a look at what we've got for our little inner fire ogre here. Let's do a little more. There's a couple spots I need to make sure we get a nice clean coat on here. This red is so thin you can really just build it up over time. That's what's great. If you overspray a little, it's fine. You just tint whatever you hit a little orange. You gotta really be determined to overspray to get yourself in a bad place. So now we're here and we can see how the centers of the center of his back looks still pretty yellow but now we got out to that softer color right and now we're out to the red tone so our final step is going to be back with a brush because we're going to clean everything up so we're going to take this guy back to the painting table and we'll pick up from there all right so we're back at the painting table and we've got our inner flame ogre we can see how he's still very yellow in the recesses, and he's darker up here. But he's not quite red enough, and that's because we really didn't have, like in reality, by the way, this guy looks much more red. As usual, the camera's not going to pick this up. As always, I'll include photos at the end. But, um, but we still want to make him a little more red and really get these colors to pop. And for that, we're going to have to go to the brush. And so what I've got here is two colors. Um, I have this bloody red, which is a very orangey red, and I have whole red, which is a very dark red. And what we're going to do is we are going to take each of them 
get them onto the wet palette here. And we are going to basically make a glaze out of them. Okay. All right. So got them out on the wet palette. Same standard old stuff. We're going to use our friends, the thinner and glaze medium. Just a drop of each in there. We won't need much more in the way of water than that because obviously we're on the wet palette here. So it's already a very wet environment for the paints. But we want these to be real thin. Because what we're looking to do is effectively just tint very slowly the, uh, the miniature here as opposed to actually changing the color of the thing, okay? Or as opposed to actually painting it, I should say. We are looking to just change the color. All right. So we'll mix up our red here. If it's not thin enough, by the way, we can always thin it down more. Not a big deal. And then we'll mix up our whole red, which is very, very dark. I mean, it's basically a brown. Not a lot of red in that at all. So you can see there, if I just flip this over, do, do, do. There we go. Okay. All right. That's not an easy thing to move around. All right. <laughs> so we're going to start with our we're going to start with our midtone red. Okay. So with the the fiery red, as it were. And we're going to test how we want to test how much of a glaze we've got by running that over our finger. Okay. That still looks a little bit thick, so I'm going to mix in some more water here. And we'll see if we can't get it thinned down just a little more, because we really want it quite thin. But we've got to, because we've got the medium in there, it'll it'll hold together. All right, and then what we're going to do, I need to grab my, this guy is too big. There we go. Get him on his stand. There we go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to just kind of go over this. We're going to trace out those muscle lines. And because we've thinned down this red so much, again, the same thing is going to happen where we're not going to affect the brown tone that heavily. But when we run it over the red or the yellow or the orange, we are going to get a better color out of it. What we're looking to do here is get the detail in that we couldn't get with the airbrush because obviously you know it's a it's a good tool but it's not the most precision tool out there and that's okay so we're gonna just we're not really painting everything here like i'm leaving the yellow in the innermost recesses but where i see a place like on his face where i want it to turn more red um, we'll go ahead and pay very careful attention to that. Because we're going to go in later and pay some more attention to his face. That's a really important piece to selling this little mystery here. We're going to make sure we turn his ears red. Because those would be... Basically, we're reverse highlighting anything that would have been previous. So where you would have been highlighting before, in your, in say, you know, if you were painting a standard color scheme, instead you're now using this red, okay? And this guy's fun because it's effectively just his big rolling layers that we're doing this to, which is humorous to me. Okay. So. Now we've got something that looks like that. <coughs> Excuse me. Much more red. In fact, I want to see that right there. Need to fill that in. But we still have our bright yellow lines, right, where we've got that inner flame. Okay? The key to doing this kind of work, the key to having this sort of thing, is contrast. All right? Fire and these effects, these rely on contrast. You had a white. If this miniature is all white, that doesn't look bright, right? But the white next to him looks really bright. In other words, what a color is next to changes the way it looks. Okay. So 
Now we're going to make sure we darken up the darkest parts. So again, we're going to start, we're going to check our glaze consistency here for our whole red. You can see that's nice and really brown. And what I'm going to do is here in the center parts, I'm just going to glaze that on nice and thin. So I pick out what would have been the previous highest highlights, right? And I tint them really dark. Okay. And again, if your consistency is right, you shouldn't be making that much of a difference to the color here. Okay. So we kind of go around again. We can we can get the little we can reverse highlight the highest highlights of his face, say the tip of his nose, the things you would normally turn very bright, we're going to turn very dark. One of the interesting challenges to this color scheme is that it's just making it look right to your eyes um, because your eyes don't want the world to be like this. Let me just say that. like, It's going to be an interesting thing when you look at it because your eyeballs are expecting a certain way that the world works and we're effectively making it not work that way right we're saying what's there is darker so there we go now we've darkened up that and look how much brighter that yellow looks in contrast now i've got kind of some hard lines from my from my dark glaze so then i'm just going to real quick get more of the light red and just right around the edge of where i put that previous glaze of that dark i'm just going to trace around the edge to soften that line and tint just the edge of that red. Okay, I'm not going too crazy, just a quick touch up. Again, just like one more layer like this, it takes seconds, right? I'm even doing his fingers here to be really careful. I mean, it takes a few seconds extra, but the effect it has is very noticeable. Okay. This just helps to smooth out some of the darker lines from that dark color, especially when I'm working in things that are like so very disparately apart here. We want to make sure that it's like that. So there we go. Got that nice and smoothed out there. And now we've got the inner flame. Now, if we want to go all the way, okay, if we want to take this really hot, well, then we're going to need to be a little clever about it. So now I'm going to go to my straight white. Okay, which I don't normally use. I'm gonna get a little bit of the straight white on my on my wet palette here. Okay. Now we know we do we generally stay away from straight white, but in this case we're gonna use it. And we're gonna get a very fine tipped brush, which was hidden under my palette. All right, there we go. Okay, so in this case, very very fine tipped brush. Okay, and I'm gonna get some of that white. And what I'm going to do is just very quickly, I'm going to find those cracks where it is. And I'm going to do a little highlight right down the middle of them with that white. Okay. Again, not going heavy. Light, light, light touch. That is the key. You do not need a lot of this to sell the illusion. You just need the smallest amount. I'm also going to do that with his face because I want his eyes to be extremely hot. Like I want the fire to be right in his eyes. So I'm going to find those eyes and just like I normally would, I'm going to highlight them white. All right, nothing weird about that. Same as I ever would. I'm going to find the inside of his mouth though and do the same thing. I'm gonna get that nice and white. Okay. Now this guy has a little chaos symbol that was added to his back because he was originally intended to be a chaos ogre. So I'm gonna go ahead and buy that. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that white as well, and then we'll we'll handle that in a moment. And then. 
So after you've done a thin white line with just some light touches here and there, again, I'm not trying to trace everything. I'm just selling this illusion. Now, what we've got is something like that. If it's a little too much, if you go a little too far, if you feel like it's there's too much white there, no issue. Grab your Lamenter's yellow and just fix it up. Okay? It's just that easy. So if we like, we say, well, I don't really like how that chaos symbol looks. It's way too, it stands out way too much. Okay. Tint it yellow. Tint the edge of that yellow. Whatever the case. Okay. Because again, the advantage to this yellow is with the rest of this red, it just doesn't touch anything we've, else we've done. So now you can see how that looks. If you want to be very careful about it, you could leave the very center point of a symbol like this white and just do the outer in yellow. All right? But there we go. Now we've turned his face very hot, and he looks like he's made of magma. Now, the reason this guy looks so funny is because, you know, he's got all this white everywhere, and it's really distracting from the overall color. Once you painted all the rest of this, uh, this would go away. So I'll put some base coats on this stuff and take a final picture of him, which you'll see at the end of the video. But now, let's turn to the idea of painting somebody not with inner flame, but just who has a very warm body. Okay? So when I pick up next, we'll be in the airbrush booth to cover that. All right, so let's say that that look you don't like. You don't want to go for the inner flame. You just want to make your guy look like, well, he's kind of on fire. He's got hot skin. All right, that's fine. We're going to do that as well. So here is the other ogre. And as you can see, I've prepped him up. So he was basically in the reverse order. He was primed with a dark chocolate brown primer. Then I did a 45 degree rust color. And then on his skin here, I used uh, aged white. Like you want an off-white creamy color, if you can see what color that is. There we go. Um, because you want to, you don't ever want to use like real pure white or you'll accidentally turn what you're working on pink. You want something with some brown in it because, again, that's red. Red has brown tones underneath it. So now we've got him ready to go here. So we can see he's all zenithled up, ready to go. So we want to turn his skin flaming, but well, we're going to go to our old friend Bloodletter again. All right? And, <clears throat> you know, zenithling him was a fairly quick process took a few minutes there and now we're going to go ahead and we're going to get that we're going to turn him into a little fiery beast okay so again i'm just loading up my airbrush with some of that blood letter cleaning out my medicine dropper i really need just like a string of medicine droppers all clean for when i do these videos okay so there we go see a little blood letter in there and now what I'm going to do, make sure we got some good flow there. So I'm just going to shoot it all over his skin. Okay. Now, when you first do this, you'll notice he's going to look kind of pink. Right? Like, he's looking kind of pink there. That's okay. Don't worry. That's what we wanted. We're just going to give him a nice, solid coat with the blood letter over any bit of exposed skin, anything we want to turn red. Make sure you're very careful there. You don't need to worry about angle on this. You're just trying to go for a solid coat. Again, because this is so thin, it's going to go down and ignore it. Like, the darker parts are not going to be nearly as tinted as the light. And that's what we're aiming for. Okay? Now... Once we get one solid coat, he'll be kind of pink, and that's all right. Once we get our second coat on there, you can see we're going to turn him to a nice red color. And that's what we're aiming at. This nice, deep warm, bright red. You'll notice our darker tints, where we left the brown in the shades, hasn't barely been affected. We just turned it sort of to a ruddy red. And you can keep going, by the way. If it's still not red enough for you, you can go for a third coat. 
There is a limit, obviously, to how far you can go with the glaze, but you can get it up to a pretty solid red. And there we go. So now, we've got our really nicely highlighted red skin. Okay? If we decide, though, that we want him to be even hotter, like, let's say this isn't hot. You could stop here or go finish this off with a paintbrush, obviously, because you can go, you know, pick out some highlights and stuff, make sure his face looks all nice, because right now this is still very simplistic. But the rest is all just fairly straightforward. I will show you some more steps finishing him up. But let's say you want to take him a little hotter. Okay. Well, if we want to take him a little hotter, then what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of our red, but I'm actually not going to clean the airbrush. Okay, that's intentional. I'm going to leave whatever's left of that blood. I'm just going to blow out all the active paint. There's always going to be a little bit of paint left in your airbrush if you don't clean it through, and I'm not doing that on purpose. I'm going to go back to my aged white. And I'm just going to put in two drops of that aged white, and then I'm going to go ahead and mix it. Okay, so again, just hold the tip. You can see the red down in there still. Okay. Now, what I'll get is this sort of pseudo-creamy, almost pink color, and that's fine. It'll just be a slightly red-tinted white. Now, all I'm going to do is at the highest points on him here, top of his head, top of his muscles, shoulder, back of his arm, fingers, top of this shoulder, right? Maybe a bit of his face, and then his little man boobs here. We're just going to touch them with that white. I don't need it to be crazy, but I want it to show. There we go. So you can see where I retinted in white. Now everything else is still not. All right, so now that we did that, now it's your choice, okay? If you want it to be sort of really hot, which is what I'm going to show you, we, we can use the yellow, okay? If you don't want it to go quite that extreme, get out like your Fugin Orange or the Cassandra Yellow Shade, um, because that's actually a very orange yellow, like the, that is not what it says on the tin, let me just say that. Um, that one's a lie. Like that's, that yellow shade is really an orange shade. Um, that's why I like Zillamentor's yellow, it's actually true yellow. Um, so in this case, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go for the, back to my Lamenter's yellow, same one I used on the previous miniature. You'll notice we're just kind of doing it in the reverse order this time because we have a more classical highlighting scheme, right? So again, going back to the old yellow there. And we're gonna go ahead and drop some of that down in the airbrush. Just a few drops this time since I went crazy last time. Lost my mind. All right. So now we've just got a few drops of that down in our airbrush. We got it nice and cleaned out. Now we're gonna just mix that up, make sure we got a good flow there. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit him with that Lamenter's yellow. And we're gonna tint that white yellow. Now, when we overspray and miss the white, which we will, because this isn't, a, I'm not a surgeon over here, that's fine. That's just going to tint the, the red a little orange. That's not a, so we're getting a good effect out of that. That's why we did it in that order. Okay, so we could get that tint. Again, season to taste depending on how much you want to push it. Okay, so now what we've got is that. It looks very, let's flip him around to the back. There we go, you can see he looks very fiery as far as his actual skin goes, and it looks like he's got that heat on him. Okay, and as usual, we're gonna take it back to the painting table and we'll finish up from there. But you can see how we've laid down a nice fiery base on his skin tone just with the uh, just with the airbrush. All right, so we'll pick up from there.
finish off back at the painting table. All right, and we're back at the painting table now, and we've got our fiery skinned ogre. We can see how he looks there. But we want to clean him up a little bit. Because maybe we don't like, we want to make sure we pick out some details, that kind of thing. So I've still got the previous two colors from the last ogre on my palette because it's a wet palette. So, of course, it stayed wet. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go back up to our larger brush. And we're going to just use the same colors. And we're going to kind of clean up some of this guy. So we're going to get some of that bright red on there down in our thin glaze. And we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to kind of trace. This time, it's more of a low light that I'm picking out. I'm just warming up that red some. And where I'm focusing here is actually more on the browns. Because I want to make sure they have a nice warm red tone to them. Okay. Plus, the airbrush doesn't suit this as much because it has more of a powdery look to it, is what comes out. And so we want to make sure we get that look of, like, a little more paint, a little more skin tone type of thing. We don't want it to be too... We don't want it to be too smooth, honestly. Like, I know that's funny to say, but we do want some kind of color variation in there. So I'm just going to kind of spread the red around. And you'll notice that when I touch the yellow, it's far more impactful than when I touch the red. Right? Like, it has, even this thin glaze just has a lesser effect on the red tone than on the yellow. Okay. Okay. So now we've got him something like that. Now, if I want to bring him back up a little bit, which is not a bad idea, I'm going to actually pick like my golden yellow here. So we're going to take kind of a mid-tone orangey yellow. We're going to thin that down again into a nice glaze. Okay. Same as I did for the other ones. There you go. We'll leave that there. Okay. And then I'm just going to kind of go over that edge line that I created. And you'll notice how much it warms that up. Because this golden yellow, or a similar sort of color, your sort of warm orangey yellow, is really a nice warm tone. And I left it a little bit thicker than the other glazes, and that was intentional. Because I wanted, the ye yellow is already an extremely thin, transparent color, so I wanted it to have a little more effect. So I thinned it down, but not much. Okay. Again, so we're just being quick, kind of jabbing at the miniature more than aggressively painting it. And so now what we've got, and sometimes you got to hit small areas a couple times, like I'm hitting his fingertips here, you know, a couple times. Because I want them to be tinted properly, his knuckles and whatnot. All right, and so now what we've got is something that looks like that. Okay, nice fiery ogre. Now, if you want to bring out the face a little more, you could take a not-as-thin version of this. You could hit his cheek, you know, because, like, with these really small areas, you're going to need a slightly thicker paint to actually make it show up if you don't want to glaze it, like, 800 times. If you don't mind glazing it, like, 800 times, then sure, you can still work on the same color. But this is about hobby cheating, not hobby taking forever. So, you know, there you go. Do with that as you will. Okay, and then the final thing I'm going to do is, just as with the other ogre, high highlights, dark low lights. So I'm going to take some of that whole red that I spread out, and I'm going to, like, hit inside his mouth here. Make that nice and dark, okay? 
I'm going to hit inside the upper part of his ear. Just little tiny things, that you know, little details that wouldn't have been covered by the airbrush. I'm going to get around his eye. This kind of stuff. If I see like a, a fold like that, kind of trace that out. It's the lower parts of the muscles, just very lightly. Just to make sure my low lights are nice and low. Because I really want to play with contrast. I said it before, I'll say it again. When you're doing something like fire, contrast is king. That's what you need. That's what makes things look like hot. Bright light creates contrast. Consider what would happen if you, you know, you struck up a, uh, like a big magnesium flare or something in your, in your room right now, wherever you're sitting, it would be so bright. It would just create these deep shadows everywhere else. Right. And that's what we're trying to create here. So now we've carved out some of that contrast and you can see on the lower parts there where he is. And that helps us to distinguish the high highs from the low lows. Okay, so that guy's good to go. He looks a little better, I think, than the other one at this stage, just because everything else is dark, so it you know it doesn't distract. You get the full effect. If you wanted to continue to highlight this up, if you wanted to make him even hotter, um, you could do that. If we wanted to say take the like he he as well has one of these little tattoos. So if we thought that that was you know should it be dark on this guy instead of light, no problem. We could take that and you know we could darken that little tattoo there so that it stands in nice contrast it's already a little darker but we can we can flesh it out even more with some of our dark red okay we could do something like that we could trace the center of his spine just a little get that nice and dark okay just little things like that you can do little touches if you want to take it really all the way up but for the most part, there you go. There's your fiery skinned ogre, ready to go. Honestly, you know, not a lengthy program to, to get him like this. For me to sit here and explain it took a little while, but the actual tactic, especially once you get going between the airbrush and this, it's pretty fast. Um, again, I'll try to just whip some paint on him and uh, we'll take some final pictures. Um, you know, you'll want to do things like pick out his eyes, his teeth, that kind of stuff. You would highlight them and pick out the rest of the details on these guys as normal. So I'll do that off camera, post some pictures, and we'll be good to go. As always, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and uh, I hope you get some sweet fire slayers all painted up and, uh, and ready to go. All right, have a good one.